next, we have Yong Gang Hu, who is a distinguished engineer from IBM. Um, he's also a member of Spectrum Computing. So please join me in welcoming Yong Gang Hu. Hi, uh, can you hear me? beautiful thing in Hangzhou, my slate just outside and just host the G20 summit. Thanks uh, uh, Linux Foundation, uh, thanks uh, uh, Ben and the Metro community to have this event here and have all of us here so, so that we can have some fun. I'm also very honored to be here representing uh, my team, our team uh, in IBM. And we're going to share with you some of our thinking, some of our uh, product, and also some of our belief. And they have been doing some fantastic project. And today, I'm going to talk about uh, embracing modern workload without losing it. Lose, without losing it. Not just IT. We're talking about without losing control. We're talking about, we're going to run those modern workloads such as uh, Kubernetes and Spark on methods efficiently, economically, and also beautifully. <coughs> we love methods. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't, wouldn't be here. We share the same beliefs as a methods uh, community. Uh, here we talk about two-level scheduling. We talk about the workload management and resource management. Two different layer. We believe two-level scheduling will give you the performance, scalability, and uh, application story. We learned that from so many years of experience uh, building uh, some of the largest H HPC environment. We're here. We talk about the millions of course, running uh, genomic analysis, uh, designing the next generation cell phone chips, uh, maybe building the fastest uh, Formula One racing car. We also built some of the largest uh, grid for financial services. Over there, we talk about tens of thousand cores or hundreds of thousand cores with thousand GPU running billions of tasks. Uh, last week, there was an uh, election uh, in US, Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. Of course, I won't go into the political and the ugly part. Um, so on the election night, uh, and at one moment, the Dow Future job 800 points. At that moment, I bet uh, all the great, de uh, great deployment at our customer all running like crazy, try to reprice the entire financial market. And here we talk about a market of uh, 1.2 quadrillion US dollars. And this is uh, 10 times bigger than the global GDP, 100 times bigger than the Chinese economy. This is how important the workload running on top of the grid uh, that we build. And we also uh, learned that from our experience of building some of the cutting edge Spark cloud service. Uh, over there, we actually have to support a, a millions of users. And without full level scheduling, that wouldn't be possible. We also believe that results always limited, while demand always unlimited. We have a bank uh, over there uh, around uh, uh, 10 years ago. They ran uh, three applications, five applications across 1,500 cores on a cluster, almost running 100% utilization. And over the past 10 years, their cluster capacity has been increased by 100 times. 
right now they're running at 150,000 ports. But still not enough, still cannot keep up with demand. The reason because is uh, there's more application, application become bigger, application become more complex, there are more regulation, and there are more data to process. But they have a constraint, which is their budget. They have a cost constraint. They want to reduce cost. That's why they're working with us to do the cloud processing and also improve utilization. The point is, you, you can always have some limit. Uh, could be either budget, could be uh, data center capacity, could be electricity supply, could be uh, your capacity from your cloud provider. In the case of a Formula One racing, right, we have a customer called Red Bull Racing, it used to be number one. They limit by the Formula One regulation. That means at one moment, at any moment, they cannot use more than 30 teraflops of computer power to do aerodynamic design and simulation. Because uh, uh, for the racing, they want to level the ground. So you have a limit, and you also have a lot of demand. <coughs> then you need to run your workload efficiently, economically, whether in cluster, in grid, or in the cloud. Now how to do that? There's a two-level scheduling, workload management, and the resource management working in conjunction. That will be the key. And think about it, you need to uh, be able to prioritize your work. Uh, you need to dynamically answer new demand in real time. You need to be able to do preemption. You, you need to be able to run many workloads in a shared environment so that you don't have a silo and so that your utilization, utilization will be high. So that's why full level scheduling is the key, and we feel that we have some experience in this area. That's why we like to contribute. And we are contributing to the massive community. And Ben already shared that uh, we have uh, two committers, and uh, uh, we have become number two uh, in the massive community, of course, after uh, Mesosphere. And what I want to say is uh, we, we are very grateful. Uh, we really appreciate uh, the community, and Ben, and team for your all the support and the guidance. Without your help, without your guidance, we wouldn't have uh, achieved what we have done. Thank you. We, we're using uh, methods as well and IBM for some of the IBM cloud service, for example, support Watson, and, uh, and in some of uh, IBM products. But we're doing more. Here, we talk about how to support this ecosystem, how to help to empower, uh, expand the Maxwell's ecosystem. Over there, we do a couple things. One is uh, we, can, we want to bring more and more application and workload on top of Maxwell's. The second leg, we want to run those workloads efficiently and beautifully. And today, I'm so glad to share a news we create a new component called a Spark Setting Scheduler, and this new component is going to be available on Mesos. And this component is going to enable Spark to run on top of Mesos beautifully. As you know, we also contribute to the Kubernetes integration with Mesos. And our contribution is actually recognized by both the Kubernetes community and the Mesos community. And uh, uh, we are also adding in my small, uh, adding more capability in that area. And my colleagues are going to share in the breakout session. And we also bring some of our application from, uh, and also application framework from IBM. Uh, we're going to put uh, RSF and MPI on top of Mesos so that we can enable more workload uh, to support HPC. Let's uh, get into a little bit uh, detail on the Spark side. So Spark definitely can run on Mesos, let's uh, no doubt. But in some scenario, uh, the Spark running on Mesos is not as good as we would like. In this case, uh, you have a city stream of batch jobs uh, running through Mesos concurrently. And, um, and uh, if you had a card, the x-axis will be the total duration and the y-axis is the, the job runtime, and every single dot represents a, a job, a job finishing time. What you can see here is uh, 
Uh, some job may be finished uh, around 50 seconds, but there are some jobs finished in hundreds of seconds. And some, in some worst case, even in thousands of seconds. And here is the Spark Setting Scheduler, it's a new component we have on Mesos. So what you can see here is uh, it not only reduces the, the total runtime, but also makes the workload consistently. Right, meaning that you have consistent runtime, your workload is predictable, deterministic in production. And this exactly demonstrates that the power of workload scheduling in conjunction with the resource management and working hand in hand perfectly. And we believe with this component, we're going to make Mesos the best open platform for Spark. Uh, let's uh, look at a uh, little bit more. Uh, how about uh, interactive workload? Uh, here is uh, Spark SQL inside notebook, and the one to run in, in a cluster, maybe cloud environment. And uh, people may think, oh, uh, that's easy, you know, go to Amazon, whatever public cloud, get some VM, and you, you can run the chip lane. But not so easy if you want to run it efficiently. Because um, uh, if you go to, to get the VMs, uh, you need to know how many VMs, VM you need and what time. But, but Spark is very high level language, that's the beauty of Spark. You have no idea about how many tasks will be uh, generated at each stage, and uh, how many jobs, uh, and the CPU and the memory requirements, and uh, uh, when those tasks need to be run, and what's the SRA. And make it even worse is uh, if you have uh, many users, uh, in, in the system, and uh, it will become more compact, uh, complex. It will be very inefficient to have a siloed environment, say 10 VM for every single user, because in that way, uh, you, you essentially maybe only get 1% utilization, because for interactive workload, you may run one task in uh, one second, next 10 tasks in two seconds, and then after that you look at the result, and then the entire cluster will be idle. What you need to have is a shared cluster, and also an efficient scheduler. And the second scheduler is exactly the workload manager for this case. It aggregates all the demand, uh, directly work with the Spark framework uh, to understand uh, uh, the demand at every single stage, and then do the fine grained scheduling. Dynamic allocated resource, according priority, support the permission, and then working perfectly with the resource manager, with methods, give you the performance you need, the SRA you need, and also the, the, the high utilization that satisfies your IT people. So there is another talk on this. Uh, I don't want to spend time on the detailed uh, diagram. So uh, welcome to join IBM session. So Spark Sentence Scheduler is in production. Uh, we use in IBM Spark Cloud Service. And over there, uh, we support many, many users, many, many thousand users right now in production. And then we also use our product, and we already have a customer, um, quite a few uh, customer deployed in production. It's a production proven, it's production ready, now available on Mesos. So to demonstrate that, uh, I would like to um, have a little bit of fun. Uh, this is a demo, and hopefully it will work. Uh, usually I don't have a good luck on live demo. And let's try. So uh, I have a cell phone with me. I'm going to use WeChat. And the WeChat is going to upload a picture. And then it goes through a few of uh, microservices, like a Kafka HTTP server. And then get into the Spark layer. And over there, we have several Spark applications managed by Spark Sentence Scheduler. Spark Sentence Scheduler is going to dynamic allocated results on demand for those uh, Spark applications. And those Spark applications are going to run deep learning workload. And deep learning workload going to run GQ cluster. And then it do the processing and generate a new picture for you. Let's see uh, whether I have a lock today. So this is uh, my cell phone. This is uh, WeChat. Hopefully, network is okay. So, this is the name of the demo. Fantastic Echo Maker. 
This is the instruction, it's very simple. So let's upload a picture. So how about doing a selfie? see something from backhand. Let's see. Okay. So so right now I have uh, uh, two applications allocated uh, CPU slot and uh, uh, doing the deep learning, deep neural network uh, using GPU. Uh, we can see oh there's uh, two GPU currently being used almost uh, 99%. Uh, let's try one more. Maybe uh, because I already shared this uh, channel, uh, maybe some of the, the methods uh, developer committer can also submit some workload to try it out. So I'm gonna try another picture. This time I, I can let me go for the beautiful Westland. And um, let's just like Nice. Eight. Okay, you can see uh, actually uh, uh, it's uh, keep increasing. Uh, there are more and more uh, GPU being used, more CPU being allocated dynamically. And um, uh, right now I have five GPU, six being used uh, for sure. Uh, some people, developers doing the work, submitting more workload. And that's fun. Right? Oh, okay. Right. You, you can see the, the results are being allocated dynamic, dynamically to, to different uh, applications. So th this is, a, this is a, a why the session schedule is important. Okay, some future come back. Let's see. Okay. Can you see that? This is a uh, deep learning using GPU, and uh, the re default is like this. And now it looks nice, beautiful. Right. Finish in 91 seconds uh, using a Tesla Kit 80 device. Okay, uh, I think uh, we have more people sending workload. Uh, right now, already like uh, uh, 10 GPU being used. This is all real time, it's amazing. Okay, uh, how about uh, let's look at another picture. Um, you know, I, I think I look uh, nicer than, more handsome than the picture. <laughs> so, I'm not more happy with this one. All those GPU are fully uh, uh, being used. Oh, in real time. Oh, another future come back. Is that a beautiful? This is the, the picture before, and this is one. I, I think everybody can become Monet. Okay, let's switch back to the presentation. And the later I'm gonna publish the, the WeChat channel and everybody you, uh, can have a try. Okay, so we talk about the sparse session scheduler. Uh, we talk about the Kubernetes, we talk, talk about uh, uh, RSF, uh, 
uh, NPI for the general workload, and we have those uh, components available, major components available. But to be enterprise usable, those components are not enough. You need to think about the security, uh, enterprise using uh, things like uh, Sandminder, RDAP, single sign-on, uh, you need to worry about the image uh, uh, registry, uh, think about the network, uh, think about uh, authentication, authorization, things like that. There are a lot of uh, open source tools available, and they are very valuable. But the question is, the question is whether you want to build yourself. You definitely can. Can use uh, all the different tools, project to build it from ground up. But sometimes, for some customer, you don't have to, because time to value matters. That's why we came out uh, and plan the package, and we bring the best uh, open source component and IBM integration and IBM VWI together to provide end to experience for user, for an uh, enterprise customer. Another, another good news to share is it's available now. We have the community edition and you can download and use for free. That, that's pretty much all from me, and uh, we have uh, quite a number of talks from my colleagues. Uh, they have done some amazing work that they love to share with you. Ho hopefully, uh, you can join some of the sessions. And uh, try this fantastic icon maker. Uh, let us know if uh, you encounter a bug or something like that. We love to hear your feedback. Thank you.